Good afternoon. I'd like to begin by wishing you all Gongi Fat Choi, greetings from Hong Kong, Happy New Year, Chinese New Year. To begin with, uh, how do we reach the level of blue ocean strategy? It, the story can be told by these two theories. One was by Milton Friedman, he said, the process of globalization generally leads to higher, though unequal, economic growth. And second was by Donna Meadows and of uh, MIT, she said, there are inherent limitations to growth. We believed in one selectively and chose to ignore the other right till very recent times. So, what are the conclusions or uh, consequences of globalization? As we all know, outsourcing, sourcing and offshoring of industries. Global trade has grown at almost three times the GDP growth. Over 150 billion worth of inventory stock is being carried in transport at any given time. This is more than the total inventory of all department stores. And more than 50% of this cargo is stored in seaports. This is one of the reasons of the success of companies like Amazon Flip, uh, or Snapdeal. Another consequence is a concentration and consolidation of global supply chains. World trade flows basically depend on lower cost, shorter time, reliability, error-free service. But there are very few logistic service providers, just to name a few. And they control the 3PL and 4PL logistics industry almost completely. Next, there's a concentration in shipping industry. Only three privately owned shipping lines. I would like to repeat, privately owned. Musk, MSC, CMA, they control more than 50% of the market. And yesterday, uh, China has merged their two biggest shipping lines, which is going to become as big as all these put together. Consolidation of port operators, again, just four. This has a very strong potential to influence global trade. Search of scale economies, you can see these kind of large ships are being built, but these also act as artificial trade barriers as these ships, they can call it only few selected ports in the world. One Belt, One Road policy is in quest of further trade growth. Eurasian Land Bridge, it bypasses Suez Canal. Gwadar Karakoram, Sinkang, it bypasses Malacca Straits. Kyok Piao in Myanmar increases the competitive advantage of Chinese goods. Hanman Tota in Sri Lanka will force transshipment for all Indian cargoes. Hong Kong, Guangzhou, uh, high speed rail is going to integrate seven ports in the Pearl River Delta region. So this is the kind of uh, implications and how should the ASEAN countries respond to it. A few comparisons. Annual throughput in 2014 of India and China. India handled 11.71 million TUs, China has handled 1.193. Annual throughput rate growth is another 7.4 percent, China is a 7.9. Shipping companies, China will have the biggest shipping company since yesterday and it will be really big. Container ports in top 10, India has none. There are eight container ports in the top 10 in China. Shipbuilding, China has 45 percent of the shipbuilding. Logistics Performance Index, 54 and 28. Ocean tariff today between India and China is just 25 US dollars. It tells its own story. Coming to the next thing, what are the consequences of ignoring, these are some of the consequences of ignoring limitations to growth. Financial consequences, there's a, almost a meltdown in China. We don't know how serious it is, environmental, economical, and political. Today, Shanghai 
container of freight index is it's a race to the bottom. The Baltic dry index is under 300. Mind you, it was 11,764 in 2008. Let's pause to ponder over two other the statements. One is by Paul Krugman who says, whom should we all export to? Mars? And second is by Jerome Lanier who says, competitive advantage today is solely a function of information storage and processing power. Where do we go from here? Developing smart systems, installing sensitive sensors to collect information, disseminating information real time to relevant stakeholders, developing connectivity, IT connectivity, data collection, storage, processes, analytic and transfer. Focus on continuous training programs and greater automation, but it may mean how do we address the labor issues? Mesologistics, developing skills, that's what we are talking about. But when we go up the value chain, its skill development is necessary, but the question that needs to be answered is who pays for it? Developing freight corridors. The question is, how long will it take? What cost? So we need to implement innovative logistic solutions. As you can see from the sculpture in Bremen, there's a donkey, dog, a rooster, and a cat. So we need to develop these kind of skills. Fundamentals of sustainable strategy essentially is buying insurance because that will be external ne uh, negative externalities, it will lead to environmental damage, how do we control it and so we need to buy some kind of insurance. The only thing is, is who pays how much to whom. So we reach a strategy of blue economy, we need policy development, implementation, most important audit. Market regulation in a transparent manner, development of organization and managerial skills, education skills and vision development, integration with global academic and research networks, and mass communication of a shared vision. Policy development can be country specific, but consequences are not. Another thing that we have to remember is impact of the unexpected, beware of the black swans. Finally, thought for dinner, Stephen Hawking says artificial intelligence could end, spell the end to human race. Is he a scaremonger? Please note he is not country specific. Thank you. Thank you.